thought a melody would fit right over that, and he, it's the song is Ave Maria. Thank you. Centering thought this morning is by Cheryl Strayed. When it comes to our children, we do not have the luxury of despair. We ri if we rise, they will rise with us every time, no matter how many times we have fallen before. I hope you will remember this the next time that you fail. I hope I will too. Remembering that is the most important work as parents that we can possibly do. Good morning and welcome to Summit Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. As Unitarian Universalists, we have no set creed that we must all believe. Summit is a place where the questioning and searching by all ages is encouraged. Whether you are joining us online or in person, we are so glad you chose to be with us today, Mother's Day. My name is Eleanor, my pronouns are she and they, I have short white hair, glasses, and I'm wearing my favorite purple shirt. And I am the mother of five and the parent of two. Mother's Day can be complicated. I have a couple quick announcements. Before the service, there was a, a screen that showed what today's service would be. If you would like to have announcements about upcoming events on the screen, please send them to the Zoom manager and um, they will be, Chris will put them into a slide. Erin, you have a quick announcement? Good morning, happy Sunday. 
and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers or the mother-esque people out there, no matter what gender you are. Um, today, we have a social justice in action committee meeting in the library and on Zoom at 12. We'll be talking about the Santee Pride Walk. It's on June 22nd at 11 a.m. This is a big deal. Um, last year was the first annual one in Santee. Summit had over 20 people support them at the Methodist Church. Um, also, we'll be talking about UU the Vote and a shelter recap of how to um, use the insights from this year. So again, there are flyers in the back, um, on the back table, um, and there's a QR code of how you can volunteer. I suggest you take a picture of it because I don't have a lot of flyers back there. Thank you. So next Saturday at 5 o'clock, uh, we're having another one of our all community events. There's going to be game night. And uh, Casey and I are going to bring lasagna. And there will be a meal. So all ages, everyone is welcome to come. We're going to be meeting in the salon at 5 o'clock. And then there will be gaming afterwards. And Erin and I are going to be talking about the games. But they're going to be fun games that all ages can play. So, thank you. As far as Santee Pride goes, I'll be there with an obnoxious rainbow tutu giving blessings to people who are walking. So if you would like to be a part of that, please show up. Uh, good morning, my name is Casey Marie Pandell. I am the minister here at Summit. My announcements very quickly. Uh, a reminder that we have begun our signups for covenant groups for next year. There are forms in the greeting room on the table that you can fill out that will have information like uh, what days of the week you might prefer, if you wanna be in an all male, all female, or mixed group, Zoom, in person, things like that. You can return those forms to Laura Lisa Gainsborough, or you can turn them to me and I'll get them to her. So if you'd like to be in a covenant group next year and you've heard a lot about them, I know that's how we've got a couple of new folks joining us. They're a really, really fun way to get to know the community, get to know Unitarian Universalism and explore your own spirituality. Another reminder is that Rachel LeWine's Celebration of Life is coming up in a few weeks on June 8th at 10 a.m. It's gonna look a little different from some of the other services that we've seen this year. Um, because Rachel was a little bit of a mystery to some of us. So a lot of this service is going to be um, sharing of friends here at Summit. So if you have anything you would like to share about Rachel, but you're not sure you would like to share verbally, you can email them to me by June 5th and I will read them out for you. Thank you. We acknowledge that our land, that our fellowship resides on unceded Kumeyaay land. The Kumeyaay have lived on this land for 10,000 years and it is their home today. We recognize the abusive history of colonization in California and are mindful of our duty and responsibility to act from our position of privilege. We kindle this flame with love for mothers and for mothers past, present, and future. We kindle this flame in celebration of community and its generations. We kindle this flame with respect and support for the greater circle of life of which we are all a part. Please join standing as you're willing and able for our church hymn and aspiration.
May love be the spirit of this fellowship. May the quest for truth be its sacrament and service be its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek one another in freedom, and to help one another in fellowship. This is our aspiration. Thank you. I would like to thank Eleanor for modeling something that I continually forget to do, even though I promised I would, which was describe what I look like. Uh, and part of why we do that is for folks at home on Zoom, folks who may be visually impaired. That way we are being as accessible as possible and giving people an idea of who we are. So again, my name is Casey. I have shoulder length purple and pink-ish hair. I am wearing a black dress with flowers on it and I have glasses. Our reading today are words from Jane Rezepka entitled Humanizing Mom. On Mother's Day, one expects to read about the wonder and glory of motherhood. While I can tell you from personal experience that we mothers like to be appreciated, I can also tell you that a rosy and sentimental Mother's Day column always refers to mothers in some other family. The picture painted there is not me, Jane, or my mom, nor my grandmothers. In my family, mothers do not suffer any more than other mortals, nor are we particularly unsung. We complain when we trip over the shoes in the living room floor, and we expect a little praise for carrying the daily grand accumulation at the bottom of the stairs up the aforementioned stairs. We do not deserve or expect devotion from our children. We wanted to have children. It was our idea. If they come around from time to time when they are grown-ups, we are ever so glad. But if they live their lives as secure and independent souls, we value that. Motherhood in my family is not always the most important job in the world. Some of us are actually good at it. Some of us shuffle along and do our best, and a few are better off in other professions. We try to face that. Mother's Day is no time to romanticize parenthood. Parenting is a down-to-earth process, if ever there was one. So this Mother's Day, let's humanize mom. Thank her for doing what she could, given all the dirty socks. Thank her for loving you as well as she was able in spite of your three years of junior high. And let her thank you for the privilege of being your mother. Welcome to worship. And now please rise in singing our first hymn in Mind, Body, or Spirit, Hymn 357, Bright Morning Stars. That will be your gray hardback hymnal.
So now's a good time to plug. Thanks again for trying with new music, folks. Uh, Mary and I worked pretty hard to try to find stuff that was easy to sing this week. But this is a plug that if you like singing, and in the meantime, until we can get to the place where we have a music director who can pick music that is more engaging and more worshipful than I've been able to pick, if you enjoy singing, please let me know. We would love to have some volunteer cantors to help lead the music. So you would be let known earlier in the week what those songs are so you can help lead our singers because I know how important music is to this community. And it doesn't matter if you're good, it matters that you enjoy it. So don't let that stop you. Our joys and concerns portion is a little short today, but in case you are a newcomer, our joys and concerns are a time that we share the big things in our lives with each other. They can be emailed or texted to me throughout the week or can be handwritten up near the chancel on a Sunday morning. I did notice that we have some candles lit today, but no handwritten joys and concerns. So if you will all join me in a moment of silence to hold these things spoken and unspoken. Sorry, that's peanut. And we hold all of these thoughts throughout the week as we leave this place. We hold you warmly and fondly in our hearts and thoughts and prayers. And now I would like to introduce Mary Carter Vale, our beloved Director of Religious Education. And her very snoring puppy. And my snoring puppy. He was snoring during the, <laughs> the meditation. Peanut, can you sit? Can you go down? Can you go down? We're working on we're working on some training today. Okay, can you go down for me? Come on, all the way. There you go, good boy. Um, I was going to invite Wesley and Mason up if they'd like to come help me, or anybody else who would like to come and help me. No, we're getting a no from a Mason. He's very busy. Um, Eleanor, I might need some help with a mic. So today is a complicated day for a lot of us, right? Mother's Day can be complicated. And I currently now am a dog mom. As you can see, Peanut's being my little helper today. But I wanted to ask, and raise your hand if you'd like to contribute, what, what are some of the things that mothers do? What are some mothering things? Like if mothering is a verb, what is it? Margo. Eleanor's going to bring the mic. Peanut, stay. Come here. We're working on our stay still. Can we turn on the handheld, Gabriel? So nurturing, exciting life in you and the permission to be oneself. Nice. Anybody else? Stacy has one. Listening. Listening. Driving Casey. the carpool. Driving the carpool. <laughs> yeah, Casey has one. Cleaning up your boo-boos and sometimes other things. Right, Peanut? <laughs> uh, any other things? I think of um, holding a container that's wide enough for any emotions or thoughts or Ooh. acting out. Wow, a container for emotions. You guys have anything to add? Making sure we do our homework. Making sure we do our homework. Yep, yep. Verbally acknowledging your child's positive qualities or gifts. Yeah, lifting up, lifting up the positive qualities. So when we think of mother, oh, we have one more. Shannon, that'll be the last one. Inspiring and pushing their limits. Inspiring and pushing their limits, yes. So when we think of mothers, we usually think of people who have female bodies, don't we? But all those attributes y'all just mentioned, are they only limited to women? No. No, no, no. We can all, we all have mothering attributes. 
And sometimes our mothering isn't just our own children. It might be our, our friends' children. It could be our nieces and nephews. It could be, it could be sometimes I, I've had to mother my mother-in-law through the end of her life. And sometimes you get to be a dog mom. My first time mothering was a hamster. That was, didn't go well, but was a hamster. <laughs> and I've learned, because we make mistakes, right? Now, did you know that Mother's Day started as a protest? Yeah, so a Unitarian, Julia Ward Howe, wrote the Battle Hymn of the Republic, or the lyrics, inspired by the carnage that she witnessed in the Civil War and the Franco-Prussian War, am I saying that correctly? Yeah. So um, my great-grandfather actually fought in the Civil War in the Battle of Gettysburg, great-great, and lost a leg. So now think about that time. We're talking mid-1800s. The main, the way that you would make your living, uh, women couldn't go out and work, couldn't earn money. So when you had a spouse who'd lost their leg, that would impact the whole family, right? And so Julia Ward Howe witnessed this in many families, losing spouses or children or parents or having them disa permanently disabled, and said, you know, we need a Mother's Day, a day where mothers express their, their deep heartfelt sorrow at what has happened and how, we, and how important peace is for all of us. So as complex as Mother's Day is, Think about peace. It seems like every time this comes around and I remember this story, there's always another war. There's always other parents and children dying. You know? So let's center peace today and think of Mother's Day of peace and having peaceful dogs. Because <laughs> he's doing really well. <laughs> We've been working very hard on this training here. <laughs> he's doing really, really well. I'm super proud of him. So that is my story for you today, Mother's Day of Peace and being a dog mom. And I hope you all celebrate, regardless of your gender, the ways that you nurture and mother, You're including yourself. That's okay. And that's one of the most beautiful gifts you can give yourself is to nurture and mother yourself. I've been doing a lot of that lately. So, so that is my story for you today. Mason and Wesley, would you like to go back? We're going to go back and build another fort. I just got Mason excited. So let's sing our children's uh, recessional song. And we're taking Jet Pig with us. One each. Come on, Pete. Let's go. Two, three, come and all you do. You guys want to go out this door? You got him? Three, we help each other learn. Four, and search for what is true. Please stand if you are willing and able to sing hymn 1031 in the teal hymnal, filled with loving kindness. The words are also on the wall.
Please join me in a time of silent prayer, meditation, or reflection as I read words from Linda Susan Ulrich entitled, For All the Mothers. For all the mothers and mother figures, the grandmothers, aunts, and extended family members who mother, the soon-to-be mothers, the wish they were mothers, the never wanted to be mothers, the it's complicated mothers, the birth mothers, foster mothers, adoptive mothers, stepmothers, the used to be dad mothers and the more than one mom mothers, the single mothers, separated mothers, stay-at-home mothers, unhoused mothers, the grieving mothers, those who grieve their mothers and others whose grief is complex. For all the communities that mother and for all those who depend on the great mother, you are held and you are beloved. When I was growing up, my mother was everywhere. If a sports team needed a team mom, she was there at every game bringing snacks. If costumes needed to be procured or altered for a play, she was there scanning Goodwill and firing up her sewing machine, even after her first stroke. If kids needed a ride from school or a place to stay for a few hours, she was there with 39 cent Del Taco tacos feeding anywhere from three to eight children. Those tacos are very fondly remembered in my family. Every rugby match, every cross country meet, every track meet, every single performance, and now these days, sometimes sermon, my mom has been there. She worked nights throwing newspapers for the Orange County Register clear through my high school years in order to be available during the day to do all of these things including working part-time as the on-duty recess and lunch playground supervisor throughout elementary school. My mom was always there, and I never have to worry that she might not be. It wasn't until I was in college that I understood why she could always be there, apart from, I love my children and I want to support them. See, money was not something that was in great abundance when I was growing up, and I and my older brother wanted to do all the things. So how did two parents pay for acting and modeling lessons, dance lessons, sports gear, when extra income doesn't really exist? You volunteer. And my mom had plenty of free daytime hours to spend doing that to pay her kids' way. Even now, as my cousin has children who are about to enter college, she still says, I don't always have money to help, but gosh, I've always got the time. No doubt that sort of sharing has rubbed off on me as I found Unitarian Universalism and found myself volunteering because I couldn't always afford to pledge or participate. I didn't understand for a long time long time the kind of sacrifice that she went through for us kids. My dad worked and still does work full time and she has done the rest. Cooking, cleaning, chaperoning, field trips, shopping, playing chauffeur, getting us to and from schools, rehearsals, practice games, camps. To this day, she still shows up. San Diego is a bit of a far drive for her to come see me on a Sunday, but she tunes in on Zoom when she can and is eagerly awaiting celebrating my ordination. She's one of my best friends, even when we try each other's patience, which we do a lot. Now I wanna make it abundantly clear that I recognize that not every person in this room or watching on Zoom has that sort of relationship with their mom. And a day like Mother's Day might be difficult if you have a tenuous, painful, or non-existent relationship with her. Your mom may no longer be on this mortal plane with us. Some people may not even know their mom. 
There are also the people who want children and don't have them, or who are mom to more children than the living ones that we may have met, for whom this day may also be sharp. And I want to take a moment to hold that in this space up front. Days like today can be complicated, and the complicated feelings that come with it are real, they are valid, and there is always space for them. But it is Mother's Day, and mothering is worth celebrating, and I imagine just about all of us have been mothered in some way, shape, or form at some point in our lives. Mothering is no easy feat. It takes a lot of courage to do that kind of work, and it can be largely thankless. Sorry, Mom. Your kids don't mean it. And yet, mothering people show up all the time through the courage and the pain to keep doing the work. In light of continued attacks from the right on women's bodily autonomy, I want to start with the courage it takes to actually become a mother, to choose to bring a life into this world. We're told all the time that having children breaks our hearts open in ways that we could never imagine before. And I can only imagine what that's like for the person who experiences pregnancy. In conversation with women I know who have given birth, pregnancy is beautiful and awful, magical and infuriating. In the months of pregnancy, the body experiences a multitude of changes, including weight fluctuations, hair loss, pain, discomfort, nausea, mood swings, the world's weirdest cravings, hormonal changes. I have seen women cry with joy and eagerness to meet their child and in the same breath bemoan the end of pregnancy. And I feel like we don't adequately prepare people for how much the body goes through in the time it takes to create a baby. And no two pregnancies, even for the same mother, are the same. But women do it anyway. Because when we can choose to be the person that brings life into the world, the end result is worth every effort. And then, of course, there's the actual birth itself, arguably one of the most painful and taxing things a woman may experience. Messy, to say the least, exhausting, and certainly no walk in the park. Not easy to heal from or experience. Almost 10% of women will experience postpartum post-traumatic stress syndrome. And additionally, current numbers suspect 30% or more of women will experience postpartum depression after giving birth. Actually bringing a child into this world takes major guts, and it is not for the faint of heart. Follow that with the struggles of the decisions around the baby, bottle feed or breastfeed, cry it out or soothe, washable diapers or disposable ones. Many of these decisions are things that mothers are routinely judged for. And you have a, a pattern of continued bravery. Despite other people's opinions and probably on minimal sleep, women are always putting baby's best interests at heart. And then there's actually child raising. Helping children to grow and learn and slowly but hopefully surely become good, kind, compassionate people. Pew Research states that roughly 68% of American mothers have a partner at home, while about 28% are single mothers. Mothers are more likely to work at least 25 hours per week in addition to their full-time mothering. It's a lot of time spent working to take care of kids and working to take care of kids. For many children, mom is partner, teacher, friend, therapist, and warden. She plays all of these roles all the time because that's just what moms do, right? Even when they're exhausted or frustrated or even just want one moment of peace, moms find a way to show up. I'm not suggesting that moms always do this hard work alone. 
There are partners and grandparents and many others who hopefully can contribute. But by and large, the typical mom does the lion's share of the tasks of child rearing and family raising and homemaking. There would not be conversations about the unpaid labor of mothers if that were not the case. So in case no one told you today, thanks mom, you do so much for our family. I also recognize that mothering shows up in lots of different ways other than biological mother that also takes a certain courage to do. Adoptive moms who wait and want and hope for a child and know that there will be tough questions down the road of who am I? Where do I come from? Why didn't they want me? All while striving to make the child, their child, feel loved and valued in the home that they have together. Foster moms who could get a call at all hours of the night asking to take and care for an emergency placement on a child's exceptionally difficult day, spending that time tending to wounds that sometimes have no words, and protecting a child they may only know for a few hours. Stepmoms who know they aren't really mom but recognize their role in a child's life can leave a lasting imprint and so work to be a good example and teach where they can. Grandmothers who are watching their daughters become mothers and hover in the space between mom, I need your help and mom, I can raise my own kid and letting them learn as they always have. Aunties who take them under their wing and tell them the silly stories from when we were kids, loving, teaching and encouraging and giving them back when they're done. Until next time. We have scores of teachers who spend more waking hours in the day with their classroom children than they see their own. Teaching their school subjects, yes, but doing so while tending hurt feelings and silly outbursts, tempers and tears. Almost 76% of teachers in the United States identify as women. That's a lot of stand-in moms in the classrooms and they take their jobs not only seriously, but with pride. Mary and I both know to some degree that we also have a hand in mothering the children of this fellowship. An extension of my ministry and much of Mary's is knowing that we too have something to teach the children that come here on a Sunday. I hope in us they see compassion and respect, strong but gentle leadership, kindness and love. I hope they see the same things our mothers teach their children at home, exemplified here, a reinforcement of the importance of the things that you all show them at home. I hope what they see from us in conversations, in religious education, buoys the efforts of the parenting that has been set afloat. I know there's a lot of generalizations in today's sermon. As I mentioned, I know not everyone experienced mothers, motherhood, or mothering in the same ways. It may sound like my expectations of mothers is that they have to do all the work. My expectation, though, is that we get to choose how we show up in the world. And the versions of mothers that I've mentioned here today, I think, are some of the best of what we can be. And best doesn't mean perfect. Best means showing up, doing the hard work. It's doing the best we can for those of us that need the guidance that we can provide, even and perhaps especially when it's the last thing we might want to do. Mothers can be two moms or none or a whole bunch of mother-like figures. After all, the saying goes, it takes a village. There is no one way here today in my limited experience on this earth, and certainly as a person who has occasionally mothered a little bit, there's no way I can make sure I touch on every single version of mothers. Relationships aren't perfect, they aren't cookie cutter, and there is no one right way to show up and be a mother or a mother figure or no right way to mother others. 
Familial dynamics, gender identities, and just plain being human can be complex. But here, right now, we celebrate those who have done that for us. We give thanks for those that mothered us in our infancy, our youth, our adolescence. We show gratitude for the guidance we received as young adults, cherish the changed dynamics as we grow our own lives, perhaps our own families. We mourn the mothers that can't be here, who have moved on from this world, joining our ancestors. We grieve the children that we never got to see grow. We acknowledge the pains of mothers not being what we needed or wanted, and the guilt at not being the mother we think we should be. We thank our Mother Earth for sustaining us so that we may help grow ourselves, our children, and others. Very small shout out to my fellow pet moms. I'm not saying it's the same thing as raising a child. But I bet in the same ways that you show and care and nurture for those dogs and cats and other furry or reptile figures, I bet you do that to the kids you know too. Perhaps even better. Showing up as a mom is hard, full of second guesses, confusion and frustrations, brimming with love, pride and joy. Being a mom, taking the role of mothering for another is the height of courage. And today of all days, we recognize the ups and the downs, the sacrifices and celebrations that accompany it. So thank you moms of all kinds from all walks of life for all that you do. We love you. So may it be and amen. We'll now have our offertory. Your Sunday morning offering is a gift that provides Summit Unitarian Universalist Fellowship the financial resources to help build a better world together. The smallest gift is welcome. For those of you on Zoom, the link can be found in the chat, book, chat box as well as the virtual order of service. Please select the Sunday plate option to allocate your donation to the appropriate account. Thank you. and who were rescued by Otto Schindler. Mm -hmm. And these two women showed me how precious children were to them. And they loved me, even though it's a shiksa, I'm not Jewish, but uh, they were so sweet and they really taught me how to, how to care about uh, my kids.
Thank you, Karen. Please stand as you're willing and able to join in singing our closing hymn number 1021, Lean on Me in the Teal Hymnal. I know days like today can be big and complicated. I guess that's kind of what we do in a community like this, right? We deal with the things that are hard to hold, the things, the hopes and dreams that we maybe didn't get or didn't go the way that we wanted. And sometimes I think that's a lot of what moms do. Is they see those big hopes and dreams going different ways than they expected, and yet they still hold us through them all. So we hold our moms, the moms gone before us, the ones still here, the ones yet to come, the ones that may never get to be. And we hold our Mother Earth in the strongest love as well. We love you all. Amen, shalom, salam, namaste, blessed be. Go now in peace. May the light within you be a blessing to the world. Thank you for being here today. After our closing circle song, we'll have a five minute break. Then please come back and be seated if you wish to participate in the community gathering. After our community gathering, you are all invited to go to the salon for refreshments and fellowship. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Please stand and join hand in hand as we sing our closing circle song. <laughs>